So section 7.4 in our college algebra textbook refers to probability and some counting techniques. So this should be a little bit of a review from Algebra 2. Suppose we flip a coin and then we're going to throw one die. What are the possible combined outcomes? The first thing I want you to do is draw what's called a tree diagram of the outcomes. So we're going to start with the coin toss. When I toss a coin, it could either land on heads or it could land on tails. And then once it lands on heads or tails, there's six more outcomes after that because we're going to throw a die. So it could land on a 1, a 2, a 3, a 4, a 5, or a 6. And then the way a tree diagram works is if you go off the branches, you're going to see how many different outcomes and what they are. Ugh, should have wrote smaller, sorry. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Now if you literally just count each of the branches, you're going to see 6 and another 6. So there's 12 different outcomes. There was a much easier way to do that question. Uh, and that's called the fundamental counting principle, where we just simply multiply our choices together. I should say options together. So, um, for instance, on that last question, the tossing of a coin is one um, event. There are two different outcomes. And then tossing, uh, rolling the die is six different outcomes. And then two times six would also give me my 12 outcomes. So when you get a larger problem, you're going to see it's using the counting principle is much easier than drawing out a tree diagram each time. Many universities are using computer-assisted testing procedures. We have a test that has five questions and five equivalent questions, yada yada. First question, um, eight questions for the second. Store side before. Okay. All right. So first, second, third, fourth, fifth. Sorry, I did a little silent reading there for a minute. For my first test question, it says right here, we have a bank of eight questions. Oh, no, sorry. We have a bank of five questions that we can choose from. Now, for my second test question, that's where the eight shows up. For the third, we have six different in the bank. And for the fourth, there's five. And for the fifth, there's ten. And then to figure out how many different exams we can generate, we're going to multiply those together. Your teachers actually use a lot of these, um, and there's literally a bank of questions, and we could kind of filter through them and decide if we like it or not. Uh, either way, this comes out to, I think, 12,000. I pre-calculated some of these, so I don't have to type. Each question on a multiple choice test has five choices. There are five questions on the test. So again, five questions. And then for each question, there's six, uh, sorry, five different outcomes. So 5 times 5 times 5 times 5 times 5, kind of like an ACT test. And you could type that in, or you could say 5 to the 5th power. And it gets 3,125 different ways that you could answer that 5-question test. Now imagine if it was a 60-question ACT test. That was a lot of different ways to answer it. That's why we don't guess, unless we have to. How many three-letter codes are possible using the first eight, letter, eight letters of the alphabet? So for the first one, we're not allowed to repeat any letters. So I'm only allowed to choose eight to begin with. And then since I can't repeat, the next time I can only choose seven. And then the last time I can only choose six because I can't repeat either the first two. And that comes out to 336. Now I'm allowed to repeat letters. So I can choose all eight the first time, all eight the second time, and all eight the third time. So I could theoretically have like D, D, D. And that's 512 options. Adjacent letters cannot be alike. This one's kind of goofy. Um, I can choose anything the first time. Now the next time I can only choose seven because whatever was the letter next to him is, there's one less. Can't use it. Um, and then this is kind of weird. A seven again because while I can't use whatever letter I used in this blank, I can now use whatever letter I used in this blank. That's kind of a goofy question. you got to think about that one a little bit. 392 is what that comes out to. How many four-letter codes are possible using the first ten letters of the alphabet this time under these conditions? Oh, conditions stated above. So again, A was where you can't repeat, um, and we're doing four-letter codes this time. So 10 times 9 times 8 times 7, which comes out to 5040. For my second scenario, that was where I'm allowed to repeat. So 10 times 10 times 10 times 10, which is 10,000. That's not a, it's a dot. And then again, adjacent letters cannot 
be used. So that's 10 for the first one, and then every one after that is only nine options because I can't use the same letter that's next to him, but I can start using the previous letters. So kind of weird. Um, that comes out to 7290. Okay, definition of factorial. When they say n factorial, what they're asking you to do is starting with the integer n, you're going to multiply him by his preceding integers. So n minus 1 times n minus 2 times n minus 3, all the way down to the last possible integer, which is 2 and then 1. So for instance, 6 factorial is 6 times 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1, but there's a neat little button on your calculator. If you type a 6 first, and then you go to the math menu, you go over to probability, you can actually go left, and then go down to where it says the exclamation point, you're going to be able to type 6 factorial on your calculator, which is much quicker, and you get 720. 5 factorial over 2 factorial, it's actually kind of neat to do this one by hand because if you put 5 factorial over 2 factorial, you can see that the 2 factorial is going to cancel with its little buddies up top, only leaving you with 5 times 4 times 3. So if you ever find yourself in a situation where you need to do factorials without a calculator, hopefully it's a division of factorials. Same idea with 7 factorial over 4 factorial. So 7 times 5, hello, <laughs> times 6 times 5 times, and then 4, 3, 2, 1. Remember on the denominator we're going to have another 4, 3, 2, 1. So those guys are just going to end up canceling each other out, leaving you with 7 times 6 times 5, which is almost 210, I believe. Okay, permutations. Permutations, um, we need to remember a few things. Uh, we need to realize that permutations are when we're ordering our outcomes or we're arranging, arranging, um, or we're assigning. When we have those types of keywords showing up, we know it's a permutation of our outcomes. We have four pictures that we are going to keyword right there, arrange from left to right, how many different arrangements are possible. So out of four um, paintings, we're going to arrange four of them, so four permutations of four. Now on my calculator, that's really quite easy to type in. I'll show you how to do it by hand once, and then I'm never going to make you do it again, but they might make you do it in college. So if my calculator will work, that is. Okay, so we type our total number first. Oh, hello. <laughs> oh, goodness. There we go. All right, type four first, and then go to the math menu, over to probability, and you'll see permutation is choice two. So four permutations of four. We're going to get an answer of 24. So back on here. 24. Oops, unextend, unextend. <laughs> there we go. Um, by hand, a permutation is done with the following formula. It's n factorial over n minus r factorial. So when they say n permutations of r, these are the numbers they're referring to. So for our problem, we would have done 4 factorial over 4 minus 4 factorial. So essentially, 4 minus 4 factorial, 0 factorial, which is 1. Um, you could type it on the calculator if you wanted to, but this, our problem ended up just being this, which is 24. I, again, I'm not going to make you calculate permutations by hand. I'm always going to let you type them right in on a calculator. We have eight people on a committee, and we're going to have to choose um, a chair, a vice chair, and no one can hold the same position. So out of my eight people, I am assigning two different roles to two different people. So eight permutations of two. Again, uh, you can use this formula if you'd like. It's not that bad, but I'm just going to type it in my calculator. I'm going to get a 56. <coughs> 25 objects taken two at a time would be 25 permutations of two, which is 600. Four at a time would be 25 permutations of four, which is 303,600. I already typed these, so I'm saving you the time. And then 25 permutations of eight is really big. <laughs> um, it's 4.3609 roughly times 10 to the 10th power. Now there's some other digits after this, but I just wrote down a truncated version of it. Um, essentially what's happening though, if I follow my formula, it's a 25 factorial over 25 minus 8 factorial, which would be 25 factorial over 17 factorial, 
So if for some reason you needed an exact answer, um, this would do it. Uh, you could also say it's 25 times 24, 23, 22, 21, 20, 19, 18, and then stop there because everything after that is going to cancel. But let's not. Okay, we are uh, at a museum with eight paintings. Um, someone's going to borrow three of these paintings. And how many ways can we select these three paintings to be lent out to someone else? Now the first question I have for you is, does it really matter what order I select these guys in? And the answer to that is absolutely not. Because order doesn't matter, we're now going to be using a combination. So same place you found the permutation, you're going to find a combination. So this time eight combinations of three. And if you want to write down the formula for combination, um, by the way, if you went ahead and did that on your calculator, oh, they didn't even want to know the answer, but we could, it's 56. <laughs> Um, on the next screen, I'm going to show you the combination formula. Maybe, nope, I'll show it right down here. So NCR is um, also written as parenthesis NR, like this, kind of goofy. His formula is N factorial, starts the same. And then this time it's got an extra thing in his denominator. Because your ordering doesn't matter, you want to eliminate the double counting of the same groups that you've just rearranged the order, so you got to divide it by R factorial. So that's the formula if you want to do it by hand, but I will never make you do that. From a committee of eight people, how many ways can you choose a subcommittee of two people? So this time definitely a combination because it doesn't matter how I order these people, they're just going to be on the committee, eight combinations of two, which is 28. If you accidentally type permutation, you're going to see a much larger number. How many subcommittees of three people this time from the eight people? So eight choosing three, and I think we already figured this one out on the paintings problem, it's 56. So 25 combinations of 2, 20, whoops, 5 combinations of 4, and 25 combinations of 8. Again, be more than happy to use your calculator. This is a 300. This guy's a 12,650. And this guy, ooh, big but not too big, 1,081, 1 million, excuse me, 81,575. I believe those are the same questions, but this time done as combinations, and you'll notice, while they are still large, not even close to as large as the permutations. Now we have a deck of cards. Familiarize yourself with what a deck of cards is. It's 52 cards, half of them black, half of them red. There's four suits. Hearts and diamonds are red. Clubs and spades are black. Each suit has 13 cards, because there's a 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, jack, king, queen, queen, um, jack, queen, king and ace, and that makes up all 52 cards. We're not talking about jokers in these decks at all. Out of 52 card deck, how many five card hands will have three aces and two kings? So in here, because we're just handing out cards to people and they can rearrange them themselves, if I have, you know, cards in my hand, I could shuffle them, I still have the same hand. So order does not matter. We're definitely doing combinations. So for the, where are we at? Three aces. There's actually four aces in the deck, and I'm going to choose three of them. And then for kings, there are four kings in the deck, and I'm going to choose two of them. And what we're going to do is we're going to multiply those outcomes together. Again, on a calculator, it's a great way to do it. You don't even need parentheses. You type four combinations of three times four combinations of two, and you're going to get 24 different poker hands that you could have. From a deck of 52 cards, how many five card hands? This time we'll have, let's see, three hearts and two spades. So for hearts, um, there are 13 hearts in the deck. So out of my 13 hearts, I'm choosing three. And then spades, there are 13 of those as well, because of each suit there's 13, and I'm choosing two. And I'm going to multiply those together, get a much larger number, 22,308. Serial numbers, i got to read these carefully because I always change them. Two letters followed by three numbers. They're, the letters are to be taken from the first eight letters in the alphabet, no repeats, and the number from the ten digits, zero through nine, with no repeats. How many serial numbers are possible? Now you could set this up many different ways, but I like to set these up with just blanks. Counting principle, it helps me. Letter, letter, digit, digit, digit. So this is a letter, letter, a digit, a digit, and a digit. For the letters, I'm only using the first eight letters in the alphabet, and I can't repeat. So that's an eight, seven, six, oops. Nope, not, which is 8 and 7. Um, and then for the digits, 0 to 9 is 10 options, and I can't repeat, 
So the first time I have 10 options, but then I only have 9, and then I only have 8. And I'm going to multiply all these together, and I'm going to get 40,320. Now, if you wanted to do these with permutations or combinations, the first thing you have to decide is, was this a permutation or a combination? And he's a permutation because order definitely matters. If I take your license plate and shuffle around the letters or numbers, you're going to have a different license plate. So it's a permutation. And for the first part of the permutation, out of eight letters in the alphabet, I'm arranging two of them. And I can't repeat which permutations understand that. And then for the second part, out of the ten digits, I'm arranging three of them. So had I ca uh, typed that in my calculator, I also would have got the answer of 40,320. Repeat the above example, except the serial numbers are now to have... Oh, these are serial numbers, sorry. Not license plates. Are now to have three letters followed by two digits. So again, you are welcome to just draw it out as blanks. Letter, 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 digit, digit. Um, so for letters, that would be 8 times 7 times 6, and then 10 times 9 for the digits. Or, you could have done 8 permutations of 3 times 10 permutations of 2. Either way, you get 30,240. That is your lesson on 7-4. I hope it seems a little familiar. There's one book assignment, and then we're going to have a series of worksheets that kind of help solidify these concepts.